Hey guys, I'm Sam. And I'm Yasmin. And this is our podcast, All Things Delicious. Each week we'll be trying out a delicious restaurant, or some interesting food trends, and share our honest reviews. But that's not all. Make sure you stay tuned for some unpackaging of our juicy chaos. And keep an eye on our social media for the question of the week, which will be discussed every episode. And at the end of each episode, we hope you guys can also get to know the raw and uncooked version of us. So grab a drink and a snack and join us as we blend the perfect mix of all things delicious. Welcome back to episode five of All Things Delicious. We are here in the new Megan's in Pastor Screen, and it's stunning in here. This is my favourite brunch spot in Chelsea and Fulham. Sam and I are actually going on a double date. It's our first double date, also our first brunch double date. I've never been on a brunch double date ever, and here what we are. I? What do you actually think? Actually, okay, we're going on a brunch date, really exciting, with Too Hot to Handle, One of the season two- five, Elise Hutchinson, hello, and her boyfriend, Nathan Sohn who actually is from season three. So we want to know, how did they get together from different seasons? I have a ton of questions for them. I have so many questions. I I watched, I was watching Too Hot Town last night. I was fascinated. Why were you watching it last night? Have you not watched it yet? No, I was just catching (laughs) up on their seasons. I was up all night watching their seasons. God, they're good. And I'm so happy to have them on the podcast. God, they're good. I mean, it must have been a lot of episodes. Also, it's a very interesting concept because it's around about they can't do any, they can't be intimate with each other. Also, they earn, they earn like a big, they, they earn some money afterwards. They do. What would you, what do you think you'd be like on that show? Fantastic. I'd would probably... you, if you want Too Hot to Handle, would you be the guy that, there's always like two people that, um, don't want people to lose the money and then there's always the rule breakers would you be a rule breaker or would you be the one that wants to save the cash i think i'll be as good as gold save that cash and and try and win the show really if you want too hot to handle and you won the prize money what would you spend your money on you (laughs) that's sweet but no you should save it you know invest 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 yeah. How's it? You look stunning oh. today. Pink is your um, colour. Do you know what? I never wear bright colours, but I'm wearing a bright fuchsia. It's not that bright. What else has been going on this week? Before we get into the podcast with the lovely Elise and Nathan, what else has been going on this week? So last week we had a really exciting wine bar conversation with Temps. I love Temps. He is I... just the most adorable, happiest, loveliest little man ever. He will he is so kind to us. But we thought this week we'd be slightly more healthy, explore some brunch. You know, Megan's is actually probably one of my favourite spots to have brunch in. Mm. Ollie's House and Megan's, I think, you know, hits the spot each time. There's a homely feel to it. You can bring your dogs. My dogs absolutely love Megan's and Ollie's House. They run to the door because they know they get treats. So we're satisfied. The doggies get satisfied. As much as Megan's is a brunch spot, Megan's is also a romantic date spot. It's actually been voted one of the most romantic The ambiance, the lighting, everything across the food, it's all delicious and um, it's a lovely spot for dinner and for breakfast. At night, when it's like dark outside, the light's also here. It's got stunning, it's got this very warm feel to it. And I've actually had dinner, you remember the old Megan's that they had on the King's Road, the small one, and they had Mm. the like little, that was like, I feel like a made in Chelsea Mm. spot. Mm. Do you know what I think? It was a made in Chelsea spot. I actually have... Um, a bit of a deep question for you, Sam, this week. Before we get into our day, and it's just you and I here. Deep questions. Deep okay. question. Have you ever been on a brunch date? Never been on a brunch <laughs> date. I stated that earlier. I've never been on a brunch date. Never been on a brunch never date? Been on a brunch... Would you ever take a girl on a brunch date? I would, yeah. I would. There's something nice, I think, getting up in the morning and going straight away to a date. Do you remember at the end of the day, you're a bit tired, you've been a long day at work. I quite like waking up fresh and meeting the person that you want to date. Are you a morning person? I'm a morning person. I know this. I don't know why I'm asking you questions if I'm going on a date with you right now. I'm a morning person. I wake up at 6.01 every single day. I always get a message if Sam and I aren't together. He always messages me at 6am and he goes, morning. And I'm like, are you trying to like show off that you're up at 6am? No, I say good morning, beautiful. Yeah. I think he puts an alarm secretly at 6am. No. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. no. that I don't hear from him you're not that like, special sweetheart I am you are I am special you are, you you are special. You'd, you'd spend your prize money on me I would yeah I, I do like um, your outfit today well Yasmin we were talking yesterday oh, evening yeah. and I was like so, so what are you wearing what are you wearing and I said I'm going to wear a short sleeved all saint shirt and with this vest underneath and she says what you're going to have your forearms out on the pod <laughs> and i said yeah and i and i and i immediately didn't wear it and i wore this shirt that i actually wore last time in the pod gonna, <laughs> no see i feel like sam sometimes has the tendency he knows things that i like and things that i don't like i feel like when i ask him a question he'll purposely 
say, oh, I'm going to do the things that I don't like just to see my reaction. Mm. So last night he goes, yeah, I'm thinking of wearing this like white denim coat, you know, a short sleeve shirt. Yes, it's cool. You know, it's nearly spring. I'm fine with that. But I was just like, I'm not sure about short sleeve shirts. But then I saw him today and he rocked up for brunch. I go, I was so excited to see those forearms. <laughs> I was so excited to see those forearms. Do you like forearms? You know, when I look at a guy, the first thing I always look at is their hands and forearms. So they actually should wear a short Not their sleeve. face. <laughs> <laughs> Just straight so the forearms. It's I a bit rude. A, I have a bone to pick with you this week. There's a lot of bones every week with Yasmin. I've seen a lot of bones. It's really getting to me, Sam. And I, I, I got, I'm going to out it on the pod today. What? And I've, we've not discussed it before. What is it? Well, we kind of have, but, you know, we tend to fall out back. Get to the point, sweetie. I want to know your hatred with FaceTime. <laughs> Do you know what I hate? We, we obviously film Main Chelsea. We're lucky enough to do Main Chelsea. We do the podcast. I feel like there's cameras in my face an awful lot. And Yasmin's always like, can we face them? And I'm like, no, I don't want another camera in my face unless I'm getting a bloody day rate. <laughs> what? You yeah, honestly, that's how I feel. Yeah, sometimes, you know, I want to see my boyfriend. I like, okay, this is the thing. I get that, where you're saying sometimes you're feeling all rough and ready. Like, I've been in previous relationships where they literally want to, you know, grab... You've been in other relationships, that's weird. <laughs> where they want to, like, the only thing they want to do is FaceTime. Sometimes I'll be, you know, 7am. I don't really want to go and FaceTime. I get that. Yeah. But sometimes I feel like just hearing someone's voice, you don't necessarily sometimes know the tone. Mm. I think if you're FaceTiming, it's you can see the facial expressions. You can see what someone's thinking, feeling. And dancing, is that? <laughs> Do you yeah. have 2020 20 vision? 2020 20 vision, baby. I can see you clear as day. God, you think you make wiser decisions with such good vision? You are stunning. <laughs> Do you think? My best I, vision. You know, those people that can relate to that. I would, I, what is that feeling of waking up and having 2020 20 vision? Like, it, honestly, mm. if I look, look, I can now see 2020 20 vision. The thought of waking up like this, it almost feels like it's not right. It feels Bless like it will you. give me a headache. Right, Mr. I've got 2020 vision. Yeah. What do you think is the most stupid decision you've made with 2020 vision? The most, the worst decision I've made with 2020 vision was, do you want to get into it? I want to get into it. I think losing you. When I, what happened last year when I went and I was a bit lost about what I wanted. I think that was probably the worst decision I made. That's really, are you crying? Yeah. That's really adorable. Yeah, that was the worst. I lost you and I'm so happy and grateful that I don't want to get deep on the pod. It's got its bloody... <laughs> like fluffy brunch. God, Felice and Nathan are going to arrive. And no, but honestly, that brunch. was the biggest mistake I've made. Doing that was, hey, we've broken up a few times, but that was awful. And putting you through that was terrible. I love you. Aww. Look at us getting on the podcast. We never get on at the podcast. <laughs> um, that's sweet. Yeah. Going off that, do you think that you still have a lot? If you could give yourself some advice. Yes. Yeah, your younger self some advice. What would yeah. that piece of information be? I love counselling in the morning. No, because you've still got no, a lot no. to learn. No, no. I, what would I your younger self? I would be to be patient. Yeah. To, um, I think that's so cliche. I'd say be patient, mm. um, work hard, um, drop the distractions. Um, what else would I say? Be patient. Be patient is a big one for me. I, I very much rush into things. I run around too much. I, I think I just need something to settle myself. And I think I hope I'm growing into that. I think the more I've settled myself, the more I'm calmer, things just work out. That's nice. Yeah. I woke up this morning. This is so deep again. And I felt so grateful. I was like, things are finally coming together. I've got the, like, so much going on. I'm so grateful. You've got a lovely little happy aura around you today. Really? Yeah. That's not what she said before the podcast, I can tell you that. I said, I've got the devil here today. She said, <laughs> she messaged me saying, God, your aura's dark today. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> okay, you had a dark aura earlier, but now your aura's light and fluffy. No, do you know what it is? I was marching my way here to the brunch date. Sam, actually kindly, he was in a taxi and he saw me walking oh, and he's like to the cab, wait, wait, stop, stop, my girlfriend's there. Also, did I think about going straight, zooming straight past and going to location? <laughs> yeah, I did. He calls me, he goes, are you wearing a bright pink jumper? Yeah, I, I, thought, yeah, I am. I like it's like, sleep. do you remind me of like a high vis? You wouldn't miss you in the dark, sweetie. Um, what was I going to say? I was thinking, how long are we going to do more Made in Chelsea for? I think, you know, I love Made in Chelsea. I think I must, you know... I was scrolling on TikTok last night and the dinner party of Corsica popped up on my For You page and it honestly just gave me the most raging 
raging anxiety. I looked at that and I was like, oh my God. When I look back at the, that time and that dinner party, I honestly feel like that was years ago. Yeah. Like it's just such a, a blur. Like I don't even remember, recall this, what was going on. It was so hectic. Mm. And like looking back on it, I think it's, look, I never, I don't, we can't really go on the details of talking about it explicitly. I'd love to sit down with you one day and actually talk about everything with you, but we can't really go no. into the depth and details because we can only really discuss what people have seen already. So it's mm. not much that we can really address. Yeah. But maybe one day we can sit down and talk about it. Yeah. I would like, you know, I've seen a lot of people like former cast members on Made in Chelsea go on to podcasts and speak quite negatively about the show and about yeah. their experience. And I think you shouldn't go and do that because at the end of the day, you've been given your platform. And the reason why you have such a big following, the reason why you've, you know, become so successful is because you did start a Made in Chelsea. And yeah, you know, you might have opinions. We all do that, but you have that in any job. You've got think at times where you're like, oh, I'm not, don't want that, don't agree with that. But at the end of the day, you've got to be grateful that we're here today as well. We've met together because we've been on Made in Chelsea. I mean, the, the one thing that I'm, I'm grateful the most about Made in Chelsea is I met you. But Main Chelsea, is a, I think it's so easy to... The, you, with the main Chelsea, it shows your full life. So you have the ups and downs. And those downs, whilst on the show, are extremely difficult. Yeah. I think going through a breakup on the show, we've had bad mishaps, which you'll see in our ne the next season of Main Chelsea. But it's you see these ups and downs. So it's, sometimes it is very difficult. But I, I love the show. But I think, if I'm honest, I think I'm on my last uh, my last legs oh, with the show. Sam always says that. No, but it's true. I think when you're going through like problems in your relationship or something, to then also have to have that portrayed on an entertainment show mm. can sometimes be quite challenging but at the end of the day we're choosing that look if we don't want to be your main Chelsea then we both should leave that's what we always say like don't complain about it you you know you either suck it up and just go through the the joys of listening to everyone talking about your relationship or you go and at the end of the day we we get the most amazing opportunities through made in Chelsea like you know Mauritius Australia Bali like that is insane like we yeah. get to do and experience the most amazing things you know working with your friends it's part of a job, but at the same time, it's business and pleasure, mm. which I think is, you know, I'm very grateful to be yeah. able to experience all these things. Yeah. And just like work alongside my honey. Honey. Honey, honey, honey. I'm really excited to, I've never actually met Nathan. Have you? I've never met Nathan. No. Um, Nathan is, he's so small. <laughs> I think he's very tall. They're both a very, very tall. tall couple. Our videographer very is tall six couple. foot seven. Um, I would ask him to get in the frame, but we won't be able to fit him in there because he's so tall. Um, but I think that he must be similar height to you. Because I, well, I'm six foot one, so like this. You're six foot one? Yeah, I'm six foot one with my six inch heels. Um, also, I was thinking, do you know what? I, it's coming up to my birthday soon. Do you know what I hate more than anything? Birthdays. People ask me how old I am. Do I think about lying? Yeah, I do. Sam lied to me. I remember when we were in, um, in Corsica. This is not a good look. I was like, how old did you just turn? And he goes, um, uh, he goes, I think I just turned 25. And I go, well, that's a lie, sunshine, because I think when I met you, you were about 25. So you can't be 25 all year round. I so you assume you can be 25 all year round, but not for the next five years. I love chatting to you on this podcast. I don't know why. It's, it's nice. It's like a roundup of the whole week. It's catch up. But I'm more excited to meet Elise and Nathan. I know. I'm so excited to see them. And I want to find out the gossip behind two hot to handle i want to know the goss i want to know the i want to know what they eat behind the camera that's what i want to know i want to know the i want to know about production i want to know what they did with their money when they won i want to know how much they got there's so much i want to know i'm going to ask the most aggressive questions so sorry i'm going to ask the most to the point questions because i want to know all the goss they're not leaving here until i know everything about two hot's handle and everything to know why they're together because also there's a bit of contrast contrastophy contrast Controversy. Controversy. Controversy regarding <laughs> Elise and the partner she won with because the guy she's got here today, sorry, her partner saying Nathan is not the person she won Too Hot to Handle with, but she's with another guy from Too Hot to Handle. It's all like that. I want to know more. Let's get them on. Elise, Nathan, where, where are, are you? you? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Nathan. And I'm Elise. You may have seen us on Too Hot to Handle. And now in Chelsea with the Because you guys were in two different seasons, no? Yeah. You were on episode... No, season five, you're on season, season three. three. Yeah. But the funny thing is, everyone thinks that Nathan is Louis and we'll still get stopped in the street like, oh my God, at Lu least you're with Louis. Louis is, is the guy season. that you were with when you left. No, no, no. We were just friends. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, no, no. Yeah, different guy. Louis, was he in your series? Yeah, season five. He was with uh, Christine. Oh, oh Christine. yeah, Louis. He was good. He was good. He was He's good. He was good. Guy. But I, um, can we hear your surnames? 
So I'm Hutchinson. Yeah, I'm waiting for this one because Elise said to me. <laughs> everyone yeah. that can't pronounce my surname. Which is me, yeah. Uh, it Nate. took me six No, months. no, no, it's normal. You think it's <laughs> no, no, longer. Um, before I uh, say it, can my girlfriend just try? Right, this no has pressure. taken me six months. Nathan Son Mungumanzulu. Wow, so we cool. after six months she still can't get it right, but I'll tell you how it is. It's a uh, Nathan Son Mungumanzulu. It was right. Wow. wow. Yeah. So that, Sam, that's a hell of, uh, I'm not going to try. It's, it's, a, it's a very <laughs> unpacking surname. Yeah, I love it. Is it because you you're South African? Uh, yeah, I'm half British, half South African. My dad's wow. British, mom's Zulu. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, that's why I got two surnames. Wow. Grew up in Cape Town. Yeah, I can nice. hear. Do you speak Afrikaans? Ik praat Afrikaans. Yeah. Ik verstaan je. Verstaan ons dan niet. Yeah. Uh, Another yeah. bilingual yeah. person in the pod. Perfect. <laughs> I know, so, uh, so, um, Afrikaans and Dutch are very similar words. So anyway, how to pronounce my surname is Mgumazulu. Uh, wow, yeah. it's a hell of a last name. What's your surname? Prince. <laughs> Can you pronounce that? Yeah. Can you pronounce that one? I mean, I've heard that before. I've heard your surname. <laughs> the actual Prince. But, so but. do you speak some Afrikaans now? I've learned a couple words that I probably shouldn't know, but right. um, no. Please share with the group. Please share. Yeah. And they never came from me. So the first one being cuck. <laughs> this is <I> cuck. <laughs> and then um, I think this is a really bad one, but. Yeah, maybe not. You know. <laughs> hey. uh, please delete that. Lekker. 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 Moi. Moi is the same. Yeah, but moi. Um, and Nathan, what words did you learn in Switzerland? Because I'm half Swiss. Yes, wow. I was going to ask you this. Yeah, there was one word I used in quite some emotion. Uh, what was it? Bonjour and Pouton. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak fluent French as well? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I, for some weird reason, I thought you also, because you're Swiss. Yeah. No, he came to Switzerland. We just got back, actually, and I'm a ski teacher, so I was teaching wow. Nathan how to ski, and he's learned a couple again. It was my first time, use. disclaimer. Skiing? Yeah. Really? You've never you seen snow. So you nice. I have seen snow, excuse me. <laughs> like, <I never laughs> centimeter. Did at least teach you how to ski? Yeah, she's taught me a lot of things in the past six months. What else she taught you? One, uh, Sorry, I tried to that teach That one's him in the bedroom. Uh, but <laughs> I have to say, I thought it was so... It's actually what I saw on your... Um, I think it came up on my TikTok or something. And I thought it was so sweet how you took like a really old... Like a, a little girl that you've kind of had as a client before. And you still went back and like... Do you still go back to your ski teaching? Now? So before I filmed Too What To Handle, I did about four seasons because I used to like ski race and I grew, like, I grew up in a tiny little ski resort, yeah. literally on the mountains. Um, and then when Too What To Handle came out and stuff, I didn't really have time to do like a four month season. Yeah. But my best friend did his ACL, so I took over his lessons. But it was quite a weird experience teaching like 16 year olds at boarding schools who had watched the show. Also, now you're famous. Oh, yeah. So it must, be, it must be interesting. Yeah, it was, quite, it was quite weird. And I had a couple of comments from parents being like, oh, we've heard that you've done dating reality TV show. And really? what are you doing on the snow? It's so, quite uncommon. This, like, also, it's interesting because you're yeah. from Tilt Town. We obviously we do main Chelsea. And so it's interesting to know how your show works. Mm. What, what is Too Hot to Handle? Too Hard to Handle is like an international stage for dating, whereas I wow. think Made in Chelsea is obviously in London. Yes. Yeah. Um, so in the show, you come across quite a few characters, so you're not really sure whether you're going to click or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't really have much in common until you really start chatting. Wow. Yeah. How'd you win? What would you say? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Elise must know all about this. Yeah, you're the, oh yeah, Elise is season five winner. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Where's your crown? Um, I don't know. I think I left it at home. But Nathan would also like to say he's runner-up. We have this discussion all the time. Runner-up. Like, I was second. second. Not that it matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> does a runner-up win some cash? Uh, no, but I want a girlfriend. So. Hey, hey. That is sweet. So what is the point of the show? A lot of people dating, international yeah. stage. Mm. How do you win? What's the, like, what's the so premise? So the aim is to like form deep and meaningful connections with people in the villa yeah. or the retreat and the aim is not to like touch each other so like no physical touch you can't even shake hands you can, no, you shake, can shake hands but i think sorry <laughs> okay. no, but like, it's a fine line like you can't really like, you can't like if you're spooning like you've got to be very careful where the hand goes it's yeah yeah so you can't even like 
or so. You can't even, you know, brush the leg. No, or, no. Uh, but you I can't spoon or you can't have a cuddle. It's just like, no. And Nathan I'm, loves spooning, so. Yeah. So, <laughs> wait. Okay, so they have this device called, that kind of looks like a little Lana device. Anyway, yeah. this person called Lana. I'm fascinated how it's, every detail is caught on camera. Surely there are things that people do that gets missed. I think the first thing that everyone missed is that AI is, uh, oh sorry, Lana is AI. So we had an AI uh, computer wow. kind of running the show. I actually thought about that the other day. I don't yeah. know why, yeah. but AI has become such a big thing and obviously this played five seasons and two hours to handle. Um, what you were filmed everywhere. Like trust me, everywhere. Is Even it's like Big Brother? Yeah, like wow. the first night is, I got there. It is, but you just don't see everything. Wow. But like it's... the first night I was there in the villa, I remember going to bed and as I was in bed, I was like, this is so weird. I'm around like, how many were we? Like 10, 12 other people or something. You don't know them. You're in a very like small room. And then I looked above my headboard and there was like five cameras, two oh, mics. Like, the worst part everywhere. is like when you're sleeping. And obviously not like, I don't know how people look when they sleep, but you know, some people sleep yeah. gracefully. Yeah. But you don't want to be sleeping. You're like it's five, it's six like, cameras, just like following your head wow. like at 2 a.m. It's quite mental. I find that fascinating. I would sleep terribly. Because even <laughs> when I've seen clips on like Love Island or something and you see them and the camera just zooms in on them, like bless them, they're just sleeping yeah. and yeah, the night snoring. And, it's, the one. It's the and people one. always ask like, when you wake up in the morning, are you actually waking up? You literally are. You're like fast asleep. Someone will come, put the mic over your head. So and then, like the lights come on and you're awake. It's fast. It's so different to me and Chelsea because obviously we go to filming, we go home. Thank God they're not watching us get ready. Yeah. We don't We don't see every session so of the what day. So what do they actually film in your season that makes up like me and Chelsea? Ah, oh, well, they, they film like ins and outs of relationships with whether it's friendships or like... Mm. Okay. Into that of our relationship, but it's like not fixed rigs. So like we do can, can go home at night, it's not filmed, yeah. which is I think a lot easier. I can't imagine what it's like to be filmed the whole time. I That is my pet peeve, I'd hate no, it. But I have so many questions, okay. So. Yeah, me too. God, me you guys too. are interviewing us. <laughs> we're just having, we just have a discussion saying, I don't even like FaceTiming, let alone no, being on No, he doesn't like FaceTiming. Do you know? Really? It you really frustrates me, we yeah. argue about it actually. Yeah. Not like badly, but yeah. do you like FaceTime? I don't mind it. I'm pretty used to it. No, I don't like it either. No. Really? Like, if I'm FaceTiming my mum, I'll get her ear. Yeah. And I'm like, mum, it's a yeah. FaceTime. Yeah, yeah. If I FaceTime Nathan, the camera's like doing 360s. He's like running around. Fair. It's quite stressful. I mean, when she FaceTimes me, she'll be skiing like on the biggest circle. <laughs> I'm like, I can't hear you. you know. That is so <laughs> What's cool. going on? My question was, okay, I always have found this really funny. When I watch Made in Chelsea, it's like you're walking down King's Road. It's like, oh, fancy bumping into you here. Like, is that set up? Would you actually not know you're bumping into each other? I, I think also in the place where we all kind of live and film, we actually do bump into each other all the time. Like, I just like, usually left in, I bumped into the Digby Edgley, and it's how? like, that's like kind of I, my seat. Quick question, how is that on camera and off camera? Like, the conversation, is it like still the same? Or do you feel like that person's less of themselves off camera? I think with conversations with me and Chelsea, I think naturally you will have different conversations off camera because you're mm. not always... I think on the show, you, there's a story to follow. You know, you, yeah. you, you gotta, it's got to make chronological sense. And mm. if something's going on, you know, they're going to, you might have a three hour scene, for instance, and they're going to obviously talk about the point, which is the storyline. Like recording every single day, 24 hours. There's only so much you can really have in the show. So, yeah, I guess it's the same. I think it was too. very interesting watching it back because you have like, I had about two years to wait and I didn't wow. know what two I, years yeah, I had about two years where I, I came straight back to ski teaching like everything went back to normal what? no one knew but I you were low-key famous but no one knew yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's in my incredible. head I was like do you know who I am yeah it's literally <laughs> like in two years time <laughs> were you, you were you kind of craving for everyone to know um I thought it was really fun like seeing who were my actual friends and who yeah kind of weren't because I yeah. think you guys have had that as well certain people who've been your friends but then you're on Maiden Chelsea and now they're like your best friend. I see what you're saying, but I think also you guys have such a quick, it's like a quick time. Cause I think I remember when we followed each other on Instagram, what you were at like 20K at the time or something. And now you're like half a million following. Yeah, That is a huge jump to make at such a short amount of time. Like what is that like when it's, yeah. you, you've gone into, started filming to to handle, like you have this massive time before people know who you are. And then all of a sudden you've got this massive media attention on you. Surely it's a bit like a shock to the system. Yes and no, because I think if you look at like Love Island, which is a great show, yeah. but as soon as you step off that island, it's like boom, 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 yeah. boom. Whereas I feel like Too Hard to Handle, 
you know, you get like a year to really process what mm. you've done, how to go about things and what you can kind of low key expect because you've seen other yeah. seasons It before. seems healthier. I don't know because in my opinion, it's like when you're on Love Island, you don't see what's happening or how you're like being presented, which obviously is daunting if you come off and you're like a villain. But I feel like with Taught to Handle, you're literally seeing every episode come out and then like you're viewing the backlash and it's like harder to process Do you get to see once it's been filmed, do you get to see the edit before it goes on Netflix? No, no, you're literally watching the same as the viewers. Really? Yeah. You don't get to see it. That's scary. And I watched it like with my mum for the first time and I was like, Yeah, what's that like watching Too Hot Tanner with like a family member? Like do you have an open family? Like do they, are they very chilled? My family's quite like dynamic and split up. So half my family's obviously in the UK, some's in South Africa, Cape Town, Joburg. So um, I've got a big fan. So everyone obviously is really supportive, but I don't have to be there to watch with them, which is great. Uh, I don't know about you. <laughs> My nana was um, a Netflix user, but she was swiftly moved on to Amazon, so she wouldn't see so that. So would she have not liked no. that? My nana's 99, she would have had <gasps> Wow. Wow, 99. Yeah, almost that is 100. She's turning 100 this month. That yeah. is so That's incredible. incredible. She, uh, yeah, that's I amazing. That's seeing her soon. And my mum, she's so chill. Like, my mum would rewind, like, the, the <laughs> to the sexy scene and go, yeah. oh, shouldn't rewind, have done that. Like, Ooh, he's good looking. Like, really? My mum's such a weirdo. Yeah. yeah, you seem really close with your family. I always see you on social media. And it's so nice to see. You and your sisters look like twins as well. Yeah. I've um, got two sisters. Have but... you seen my brother? No. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Does he look like your twin? Is he taller? He's... Okay, he's bigger than me, but I'm taller than him. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, yeah. Wait, do you, is he the that. same age as you? No, so he just turned 22 uh, mm-hmm. last month. He's uh, he's a professional rugby player. Wow. Wow. He's making his debut for the Springboks in June. Big up, broski. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> My guy. And you're seeing him next weekend. All right, so he's coming to England this weekend, playing against Northampton. So oh. Would he ever do too hot? I told them just give it a couple of years and then, you know, once you've had a career, yeah. then you can go do the town. What is it like working with Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> you work well, with like so many people cool, like. all over the world, like yeah. some in America, mm. some in the UK mainly. Yeah. It's pretty sick. You can be like, I'm on Netflix. Yeah, it's, it was a pretty surreal thing. Like when I, would I saw definitely Lana put that in my face, I was like, wow. Because my like turnaround from going on was like a month. So I didn't have time to process it. You don't know you're going on Too Hot to Handle. Yeah, what's the casting process like? Because when you're on the show and you watch it, it's like you don't know you're on Too Hot to Handle. That, but that, that's so true though. Do you not actually, you so what do you think you're doing? <laughs> like, you, can, you can guess that it might be that, but you genuinely, you're not sure. Is it like party, I've heard, I once got a DM about something called Party in Paradise. Is that, is that, that, is that it? It's literally that. Like imagine you're at home and you get some email from like some parties in paradise. Like, I've never heard of that. Yeah. Obviously you read it and you're like, okay, some of this sounds like a con, but I can kind of believe it. Yeah, yeah you know but you, surely people now, when they get that kind of email as a day show, like go on it and then think it's going to be too hot to handle. <laughs> it's like such a nice like, climax. The further down you go the rabbit hole, you're just like, okay, what? Like, you've literally caught me and I feel like really? such an idiot. We would have been on the same season. Yeah, Because I gonna... also got the DM to go on Parties in Paradise, Nathan's season, and yeah. I was like, what is that? That looks like bullshit. I was yeah. like, it's COVID, I'm out of here. So I didn't reply. <laughs> and then when his came out, or season two came out, I was like, oh my God, I've missed that email. So I kind of like, when I got casted again, it was called Wild Love. And I was yeah. like, okay, I think this could potentially be too hot to handle. What do you win if you win two or ten? <laughs> so I actually won a hundred thousand. Oh, Shut get up. Get out. Break the bank, break the bank. It was what? crazy because I didn't like for me the crazy We're doing thing. the wrong show, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, imagine those prize money on major yeah. Chelsea. I think for me, like I'd obviously seen to what to handle and I was like, there's no way I'm gonna win this. I was like just trying staying for like a week or two and in my head it was like I don't know. I never thought about it being like a hundred thousand, so I broke so many rules and stuff. And then, so every time you break a rule, it deducts from the hundred k. Yeah. So what could the prize money be? We started at two hundred. Imagine. So you lost a hundred k. Yeah, and I'm sorry I, to hear that. I lost. I lost one hundred and fifty k on my show. Oh, wow. <laughs> sorry, so not sorry. Fifty k new winner. So does the winner get whatever's been left over? Yeah. So why did everyone else care so much? Like, oh, don't use money. You're not even going to get any of it. Because, because <laughs> some people the think they're going to win until so they like don't. So the people that think they're going to win, 
maybe didn't spend any of the money and in my head I was like I'm never going to win this so I just blew like the winner's never the money comes and goes and then I won it and I was like shit I wow. whoops but the winner's never the one to be like oh don't break any rules I feel like the rule breaker is the winner but to be fair though I think after all the rules you broke you definitely compensated for that in the show yeah I actually ended up giving 50k away to like the runner up Dre who's my friend um, he gave generous. 50k generous. Just, yeah. just off generous. your own would I do that yeah. no like, <laughs> it's the honesty that counts. Wait, so Dre was the runner up. Yeah. And you what how like what came how come you did that? It's a very good question. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> because basically like I felt like I was so grateful to be on the show. Yeah. I had an amazing time, met friends. The time I had a boyfriend, I was the only one on that show like leaving with someone. And I just felt like Dre was someone who I got really close to. I knew his family situation and I knew that it would like help him so much in life that's so that's sweet. honestly so lovely my mum was like the more you give the more you get so true so megan's is very kindly put on a spread for us a breakfast spread yazzy what have you got i got a veggie brunch with smoked salmon i've got the shack chorizo is that how we say it shack, sh shack, 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 shack chorizo shack chorizo the most classic breakfast here at megan's and i just got avocado on toast with salmon simple oh. simple but i made quality. a big dinner last night so yeah, are you okay good. yeah you yeah. <laughs> I'm a better cook, though. No, 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 no. Disclaimer. Uh, I went for the Royale. I have a question for you. When you're doing Too Hot to Handle, mm. what's the food like? Do you want to go first? I think over the seasons it changed. I think my season was lucky to get graced with like a personalized chef who's cooked for like P. Diddy and like Rihanna. Wow. Um, wow. So he was like, it's my mission to feed you, you know? So the guy was just <laughs> chefing. Sounds ideal. No, it's, it's, it's quality when you think about like, you get quite stressed and um, you don't really eat that much on the show, but I was putting on weight, so I was like, the food's really good. Yeah. So you're just eating, eating, eating? I'd I was enormous. eating like every single cuisine at every meal, like fried chicken to wraps <laughs> to like... What the hell was your chef? Did they, did they No, literally. <laughs> breakfast, lunch and dinner for you? Every single meal of the day, three times he was chefing. And then it was my birthday on the show, so he even made a cake for me. I was like... Wow. Yeah, Why did you get that? Key. No. So me, but, <laughs> as the seasons I'm went. thinking, wait a minute, we do the same show. Yeah. No, but I think, like, I had such a short turnaround to going on that I lost a lot of weight really quick. I was so stressed out. I was like, I'm going to be in a bikini. It's midwinter. It was like yeah. February time. What is that like? Was that an immense pressure? Because I would, if yeah. I had to be in a bikini 24 7, like, that would honestly, I would mm. hate that because you know that you're constantly being filmed, like, all the angles. Does that not give any, I feel like yeah. everyone's so confident in there because well, it doesn't. <sighs> For me, it was really weird because it was during winter and I was in Switzerland. I wasn't really caring like about my physique. And then I worked out two times a day for three weeks, ate really well. And then when I got there, I had to do a 19 day quarantine and your nerves are so high adrenaline that I was just losing weight. And I probably ate chicken three times a day. Um, but ours was during COVID, so it was very different. Like everything had to be in Tupperware. It was really good. Mm. And I'm the least fussy eater. But How long were you guys in there for? Two I months? was in there for like two months. Two, two and a bit months. Wow. I'm really enjoying mine. I actually normally never go for like the veggie brunch, but I wanted to try something different today. I love brunch. My favorite meal of the day. Yeah, what is your, is that your favorite meal of the day? Yeah, I honestly think it is, yeah. Mm. Like I can never be asked to cook it myself, but going out is my favorite. Yeah, I would sure. never just. I agree. Yeah. Could, do you want to try I this? I would never cook a brunch for myself. Mm -mm. No, but Sam, do you want to try this? I'm okay, thank you. Do you want to try this? Why'd you Yasmin's thing is always trying everyone else's food. I always prefer other people's dish than mine. Does anyone so else do have I. That? Yeah. What it's is your favorite food. dish to like cook and put the most effort and time into? Like, I love cooking that I okay. prefer to cook. She's also such, she can rustle up anything she has in the fridge. It's pretty incredible. Do you have any like traditional meals that you make from back home? Well, my dad. Because I've got like a few, which are quite Yeah, unique. my dad has taught me to like make, it's, Armenian salad, you know, like when you go to a Lebanese restaurant, like fatouche salad, um, like l lamb dishes. I can cook that. It's just a lot of. I'm not. I find that like, eating a lot of meat is quite heavy, so I don't always cook that. Yeah. What about you? Uh, can I? Can I? I make chicken a lot of meat. with a million spices. Really? What is it? Like, what is a typical <laughs> dish that you have from back I home? I always have protein, like. Where I come from, South Africa, yeah. meat, meat is an essential thing to eat. Um, so we always like, it's either meat or chicken, but you spice it up because 
We're not like you guys. No, she cooks with no spice on her chicken. So do you always have to add extra spices? I always, yes. like, I always add too much than too little. And we so. first started dating, like I was like living at his house, and he'd be making me like the spiciest dishes, which <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know the rest. And I was like, fuck, not again. Yeah. Do you, if you ever go out for dinner and you don't like the food or if it's cold, yeah. are you guys ones to? tell the waiter would you send your food back or would you just suck it up and eat it yeah yeah no <laughs> you're ways. wanted let's tell the if truth if the food is not hitting please send it back like, but you do it politely politely, like, yeah. politely yeah. Yeah. Always you can politely. say anything politely yeah Yasmin likes to send her food back that is not <laughs> true no like I said if it's cold I will like politely mention it because I feel if you're you're paying for food yeah, paying you don't have service. to say it nastily but like I would, if I had a restaurant or something I would love to have actual feedback because I want to mm. make it better for next time for people if you're going to be rude and be like, this food is shit, obviously I'd be like, wow, that's a bit aggressive. Do you yeah. feel like you eat more now that you're in a relationship? Do you know, definitely, I think... At the start. At the start. Yeah, I we saw, used to go out for dinner the whole time. Now I we don't saw a much. study that says relationships, <laughs> I mean, that make you a bit more upsize. Well, usually... Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, upsize, I like that one. He's got... I usually have, when, like before... I would always eat less at the start of a relationship out of nerves. But I feel like with Sam and I, we love going out for dinners and kind of traveling. That We ate a lot of food. Whereas I think now, we eat less than we did yeah. at the beginning. Even though we, we do but eat a lot, obviously. We have a food podcast and we review We are just massive foodies. So like yeah. Our favorite thing is yeah. just going out for dinner and just chatting nice. and just yeah. eating. We don't really talk much when we're eating so we enjoy the food so much. It's very, mm. But we also want to yeah. be healthy as well. Mm-hmm. We don't... We don't overindulge, I'd say. Not anymore. Not anymore, we did. Oh, did you hear that, Nathan? Yeah, I did. We go to bed, obviously every night, and Nathan will have crisps, sweets, chocolate, everything. So obviously I'm going to you know, have a bit. Yeah. This boy's no, no, metabolism is... Never seen anything like it. So you can eat whatever. Okay, anything. As, as mo- you're both models. Yeah. Do you feel like there's an pressure... Do you feel like you have to watch what you eat or? I feel with any job you do in life, there's a bit of pressure that comes with it. Yeah. Um, it just depends how seriously you take it. Because obviously the modeling industry is quite broad now in terms of how you can look, mm. how you can be perceived. But um, yeah, I still focus on my diet. <laughs> did, you go on the, did you go on the show to, I, I guess, get for modeling to get more of a profile? Like what was the plan? Why did you join the show? Yeah, for me, I was like a full-time model and I loved it for three or four years, but then I kind of felt like I didn't have a voice and you're kind of just a canvas for every brand. And people were like, you're actually really loud and funny. You should go on Love Island or you should do a show. You met each other's friends and everything. Yeah. Do you Families. have the same friends? No. Um, I think in the London hot. scene, we've like crossed over people that we know because um, I've lived in London for like six years now moved over early um, we met so, again yeah. through one of our mutual friends what was your first date well we met what in Shoreditch House yeah I was yeah. super drunk I basically cancelled my plans that night I had like a girls night yeah. found out through our mutual friend that Nathan was coming so I was like right off I go yeah he didn't turn <laughs> up he didn't fucking turn up so then I went to Shoreditch House with that mutual friend she ended up leaving my other friend was there actually a producer from yeah. Too Hot and then Nathan arrived, but I was so But I came drunk. at like 11, because I had to go see a mate before. Uh, <laughs> and then I completely just like invited myself back to his. <laughs> that was the first day. I was That's like, I'm sweet. only free tonight, no other yeah. night. Have you keep in touch with people from Too Hot? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, bro. Yeah. I mean, to film in that scenario, it's like you're either best friends or you're just like, I fucking hate you. Um, and my so, season, my season was different, I feel like, to yours. Because um, I had people, when I was like 20... 425 at the time there was like 29 30 bit older crowd um so everyone had like different needs and wanted to come across differently in the show whereas i think for you it was like a similar age group so everyone's still friends in their season we had like the strongest friendship season season. my season's like a fucking gladiator show (laughs) there's a lot of things that people don't know that happen in my season Um, spill 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 (laughs) like it's hectic after my season came out like Everyone kind of like was in London for the first two months. Everyone things, kind of slept with everyone. Things got so really? messy. It got oh, really? so messy. So, and then after those two months, like people went to LA. I stayed in London. Like, do you know what I mean? Then it kind of dissolved. Yeah, yeah. But still, a lot of bad like blood. So being on the show, 
like, do you guys ever watch the playbacks and go, shit, did you really just say that? Like, yeah. Yeah. And, and does that ever like spill into real life? Yeah. yeah, I recall one moment watching it back and Sam goes, I just love them both. And I was like, what is wrong with you? I was like, what is actually, some things I watch back to Sam, he says things in the heat of the moment, but forgets he is being filmed and they'll probably use the roguish thing that he says in the edit. Yeah. Oh, I forget the recording. And I watch it back and think, did I actually say that? Yeah, but the thing yeah, that yeah, I yeah. find really hard is like, because we all know like, especially if you've done TV, that it's not coming out live. Yeah. Um, so what if like, you're chilling on a Sunday or whatever and then maybe they would take something Sam said and put it in a different context like that surely that must create drama within Friction. your relationship yeah. I don't know I've never seen that happen I've never seen that happen but, but definitely maybe lookies yeah lookies. like facial expressions I guess you could cut any facial expressions yeah, 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 yeah. do you have to do that on too hot we have to like look yes. over it's really bizarre it's, isn't it but I, yeah. can you give us a stern look and you're like it's, it's just like who am I stern looking at and it's actually funny I am um, the Corsica dinner party popped up on my For You page yesterday and I was so and Sam just sat there like <laughs> I was like why are you doing that like why are you? it's like a nervous face expression I think yeah. you have and it's like I'm so fucked but like, it's I don't just know what so do. easy to like stir the pot I feel yeah. like and these oh, you're just, two are you're very just, just like it another so ingredient. Boring. It's so more. Yeah. So yeah. Nathan doesn't watch it as much as I do, but when these two are on, it's entertaining. Trust me. Just, well, we we, we both have no filter, so I think that's why sometimes we can get ourselves in very tricky situations. Mm. Um, yeah. I just say it. I will just say. <laughs> well, something. if you guys need more, we're glad to join. <laughs> you guys should join. <laughs> I'm not sure. I like, could I've see. I could see you join. Yeah. Yeah. Would you I do thought it? about it. It stresses me out a bit because, like, for us, it's so intense. Like, we do intense filming for like a month or two, and then that's yeah. out of your life. Yeah. But for you guys, it's like a weekly thing, and it must really play into your day to day and sure. relationship. You know, like, because you came in, you came to the. How many followers did you have before you went on the show? I had like 6,000. 6, wow, and now you've got. 15. And now like, you're famous. Almost. <laughs> how having lots of followers on Instagram, how has that affected you? Um, personally, I think having the year before the show coming out you kind of prepare yourself mentally but you can never really prepare yourself for what's to come if you never really experienced it so it was actually quite surreal obviously I never I'm from Cape Town but when I when it came out I was in London mm -hmm. so imagine going around London and people are like literally pulling you aside whilst you're walking the street or you're in the tube or like wherever you are they they feel like they know you right yeah, yeah. so yeah. the, the amount thing, of like people that have that like side of I know you so it's crazy it's really crazy and I would never think it would be so well received but I mean like over 100 million people watch the show so that's crazy. you kind of really can't like beg the question of do they know that's me do crazy. they not that's what I didn't actually process like in my head like half a million is a lot but also compared to a lot of people it isn't like that much is how I see it but I think in my day-to-day -day life is where I'm the most shocked like in South Africa we were stopped honestly about 30 times a day in the UK it's like really? 15 like you I can't go anywhere without not being stopped which is, for me is difficult does it ever I, get annoying yeah but like so has there ever been a moment where you're like I, I kind of just get used to it yeah like, but Nathan's a guy like we know as girls if we're going to like Tesco's on a Sunday violently hungover yeah. I can Nathan pretty absolutely rough. loves it <laughs> hey listen yeah, I'm, well, I'm, I'm not no, shy no I love it and we have to say we're very grateful no, yeah, yeah, without yeah. them we couldn't do what we but do but then again you do get some people who are like no don't talk to me I'm not ready I'm not in the mood do you know what I mean where I feel that you don't have that duty to say that you know what I mean because yeah, yeah. you have done a public show, show yeah. where it does relate to the viewer a lot I think I, the I only think difficult part is like because Nathan and I did different seasons is people coming up to me in person and thinking like they know you but that was two years ago Right. And it's quite difficult being in like a new relationship, which is like very like real life and having the past being brought up all the time. And I think it's also people thinking that they've know about you and they think they've got you like they've got you completely figured out. And I think sometimes on social media comments, do you find that it's quite sometimes I have this It's like people are speaking about a situation or something as if they know exactly what's happened yeah. so it may, I want to bite back but I'm like okay I'm just going to bite my lip <laughs> so my mum right okay so I'm looking at my TikTok and I see like 
this person like really coming like defending me so yeah. I look into it and my mum had created herself a TikTok not knowing she'd put her last name Hutchinson <laughs> and my mum is slating 14 13 year olds she spent hours doing it so we've banned my mum from TikTok oh, replying to any hate she's comments she's trolling it's perfect. she's like you don't know Elise and Nathan and the love they share for each other <laughs> big up mumsy got- it's the most bizarre breakfast you've ever had mmm let's see what it would have There's had so to many. Be, so many. Like, it would have had to have been in a different country from where I'm from. Um, you French people have, like, pancakes with anything in it. We don't really have, like, breakfast in Switzerland. Like, it's really hard to find a brunch spot. So someone here said chicken porridge in Bali. Like, Ew. What? Like, what? Why? Raw oh. chicken? Like, did you get Bali belly? Okay, the, like, the longest thing I've ever had is, like an insect or like eat those centipedes or like something like that for breakfast well you have to, I tried them in the morning I wouldn't say it's breakfast but oh. wow where did you try that the South Africa nice like some oh. came um, came from like his travels and he was like guys I brought this with me I think you'd really like it and I just looked at him like you're mad but anyway I tried it and it's not the one well, I've had so much fun getting to know you guys. Guys, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, thank yeah. you for having us, guys. Honestly. We'll have to do this double date soon. Dude, I could actually chat to you guys for hours, yeah, but okay. like Ben's <laughs> like, right, can we wrap the podcast up? Can we get up? another plate of food? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have to do this again. Well, it's because we for see sure. you so much on social media. It's yeah. lovely just to meet you in person. No, it's, likewise. It's and get to know you guys as like, people. Because I've, I've seen like a bunch of pictures of you on Elisa's mm. You Instagram. get a lot of bad time on Elisa's Yeah, <laughs> This is my first like serious, serious boyfriend. So everyone's quite shocked. Wow. I've wow. calmed down a lot. And yeah. Vice versa. What's the, wait, can I just ask you, what are your star signs? I'm um, Aquarius. Hey. Leo. Oh, hey. And you two? Uh, Tauruses. We're Tauruses. three days apart birthday. Oh, my nice. God. So our personalities are We never like, clash. That's no, it's like we're so <laughs> stubborn. So the both of us as two stubborn people can sometimes be a challenge, yeah. especially when you're working together and coordinating a podcast. So it's like fire with fire. Yeah. Flame it's it's two bulls. It's perfect. It's perfect. Like they get on like a house on fire. But then also we have Ben who helps us with um, like, <laughs> coordinating our podcast. Coordination. And Shout ben, out ben, are you single? Relationship? Yeah, Ben, are you single? S- single. Everyone, Ben. ben we'll, is we'll put a his name below. Tall, good looking male. <laughs> who, uh, in case taller you can't than see Nathan. him. Uh, taller than me. Just because so. <laughs> how, tall, how tall are you? I'm s- on my modeling card. I'm 6'4. Six 6'4. Four. Six four. Wow. Ben's 6'7 and I'm 5'11, so I'm tiny. Oh, no, you you're 6'7. You should have said you're 6 foot, bro. Sam, I'm definitely <laughs> taller than you and I'm 5'11 and a half. Really? <laughs> okay. oh. Anyway, here's our height. Thanks for watching the podcast. And thank you to Elisa <laughs> Nathan for coming thank on. We guys. really appreciate it. We really it. appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you so much. No